what a 180 that this conference has done in the last year because it was August of last year, so basically almost 11 months ago, when OU in Texas announced they were leaving, the Big 12 was in shambles. Everyone was saying, basically what they're saying about the Pac-12 right now, well, the Big 12 is done, it's gonna disband, everyone else is gonna leave. And the Pac-12 had an opportunity to poach a bunch of Big 12 schools that wanted to leave. And George Klyovkov, the new commissioner, he he sort of said, no, we don't need you guys. We're not going to add you guys to the Pac-12. We're fine w- with where we are with our 12 teams. And he sort of gave a little bit of a finger to the new Big 12 schools or to the to the current Big 12 schools that were trying to leave. And it's just so funny how the tables have turned now. And it's almost as if Oklahoma and Texas almost did the Big 12 a favor by leaving when they did because it gave the Big 12 the chance to act first and salvage itself first. And that's really, I think, is what's going to be the demise of the Pac-12 is that USC and UCLA didn't leave first. OU and Texas, did. that gave the Big 12 the opportunity to get the best of the current G5. And now it's giving them the opportunity to say, hey, we just made 12 teams. We're looking pretty stable right now for the near future. Now we're going to poach your teams because you just lost your big dogs. It's uh, it's so funny how this has played out. And I know the Pac-12 is probably calling, you know, those big 12 schools that wanted to join them last year. And they're probably saying, hey, we're, we'll let you guys in now, you know. But if I'm Baylor, if I'm TCU, Texas Tech, Oklahoma State, I mean, you're probably saying, uh, I'm sure you can't wait to take that phone call from the Pac-12 and say, yeah, uh, we don't need you anymore. We're not interested anymore. In fact, if anything, we're taking your teams, but <laughs> you know, uh, it's just so tea. funny how it's played out. <laughs> exactly. You know, just sipping their tea while they take that call, just complete satisfaction in the whole situation and how it's played out. And what's crazy is just like you said, it's all about the timing of how everything has happened and why. The... So basically the Pac-12 being a little bit snooty um, and being, being that like a little bit on a high horse is kind of come back to hurt them and then the timing of the you know exodus of texas and ou has really helped uh the big 12 overcome the pac-12 because like you said if that hadn't happened say ou and texas just now after usc and ucla made that announcement then it may be a way different show here we may have the pac-12 over here successfully poaching big 12 schools so it's it's incredibly um it's just, it's incredibly interesting just to see how everything has gone over. When you look over here, the Big 12 hired a new commissioner, Brent Yormack. Uh, he's basically involved with the Brooklyn Nets. He's one of their like big heads over there. But he has been aggressive. He has been adamant about the Big 12. He has said that they want to be on the offensive, adding teams. They don't want to be left out in the future. They want to make themselves a formidable conference and right now if they do add those six teams they are definitely well positioned and well poised to do so uh those g5 teams that joined the big 12 they are loving this because they never in their wildest dreams could have imagined that the potential revenue stream for them based on what they were getting is going to like quadruple like potentially quadruple for them in a matter of years and that's absolutely crazy so teams like cincinnati usc this is an absolute dream come true for them and of course if you're a big 12 fan this is a dream come true for you too because your conference isn't going to fall apart and your potential teams are going to end up in limbo or have to relegate to a lower league 